Hi, welcome back to Data Structures and Algorithms. In this lesson, we'll be discussing heaps. A heap is really useful in a lot of applications and a lot of problem-solving techniques that we'll be using throughout this course. So a heap is based on a complete binary tree. Recall that a complete binary tree is one in which the tree is completely filled in uh, except for maybe the bottom row and it's filled in from left to right there. And we found in the previous lesson that the best way to make a complete tree and, and maintain that is with an array as your backing data structure instead of linked data. So a binary heap is a complete binary tree that satisfies what's called the heap condition. A heap condition determines <coughs> whether a heap is called a min heap or a max heap. So uh, basically a min heap is one in which uh, the smallest value is at the top and a max heap is one in which the biggest value is at the top. So remember a complete tree must have full rows of children except possibly the right side of the bottom row. So let's get a formal definition for a min heap and a max heap going. A min heap requires that each node's value be smaller than the value of its children. We call that the heap condition. So if I had a tree and I had, um, you know, a bunch of, you know, branches coming on, but if somewhere, somewhere in that tree, you know, we had like a seven and over here I had an eight and over here I had a six, this would be violating the min heap requirement. The min heap requirement says that this node here must be smaller than its two children. So I'll put a, I'll change that. And let's say that this is instead a nine, okay? Now, if this is a nine, there's no, there's nothing that says that this can't be bigger. See, this could be a 10. You know, if this is like a four, uh, this could be a six maybe, and this could be a, oh, a five. And, and that's okay. It doesn't violate my min heap condition, even though 10 um, is, you know, is bigger than seven or, you know, even if this 10 was like a three, you know, that's fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that each node has to be smaller than its children. The max heap is the exact reverse. Each node has to be bigger than its two children. So because they're kind of sort of sorted, we call them a weakly ordered tree. So why would we want something to be weakly ordered? Well, when we have something that's weakly ordered, weak ordered, we can do a lot of operations really quickly um, and kind of always be real close to getting it in order if we need it to, uh, but we don't have to go through all the rigor. So it's kind of like a happy medium. All right, so let's look at how to create a min heap. So we're gonna create a min heap with these numbers here. So the way we start is we um, will put the very first node first. So that's gonna be a seven. Then here comes the next node and I'll make it, remember it has to be complete, so I'll make that a negative four. But wait a minute, this violates the min heap structure. I'm gonna go ahead though and, and make an array over here as well because we know this will be backed by an array. So currently in my array, I have a seven and then a negative four. But we know that that's gonna violate, so we're gonna have to do something. We're gonna have to swap is what we're gonna have to do. So we're gonna swap these two values here, okay? So we swap the seven and the negative four. So that, that's what's gonna happen here as well. And they'll become negative four and seven. All right, let's take a look at the next number. The next number is an 18. Remember, a complete tree, we have to put it there. That's no matter what number comes next, it has to go there. Now we check our min heap condition. So uh, 18 is got no children, but what I want to check is, remember, the whole rest of the tree is it should be good at this point. So I really just need to check 18's parent. Is 18's parent smaller than it? It is, so we're good. Let's add another number. Remember, it has to go here. So we're going to add a 24. Again, just check 24's parent. Is 24's parent, I'm going to add this to the array, is 24's parent, um, smaller than it. It is. 
Well, let's think about the array right quick, though, since we know we're going there. These are the indices. How would we get the parent index from 24? Well, you can see that if you take 3 and um, divide it by 2, uh, excuse me, subtract 1, then divide it by 2, you would get the parent. So just like 18's parent was index 0, so subtract 1, you get 1, divide that by 2, 1 divided by 2 is 0, because we're doing integer division. So we're looking at in the node index minus 1 all over 2. That's going to be an important formula for us. All right, let's go to the, the next number, because we, we didn't have to do anything there. We're going to add a 3, and it has to go right here. So we'll check. Uh, this is at index 4. Let me just add a few of these here. 4, 5, 6. So uh, at, at index 4, we added a 3. Okay, so we need to check the node at 3 divided by 2 is 1. That's 7, right? That's my parent. So that's how I calculate it. I take my index I just added, and I divide it by, subtract 1 divided by 2. Pictorially, it's just right here, 7. That violates, right? So I need to swap that. I need to swap the 7 and the 3. So we'll do that. Okay, not bad. So now I know that the 7 is fine. Okay, what about the 3 and the negative 4? Let's check its parent. Well, 3 is not less than negative 4, so we're good there. But keep in mind, it would have been very possible for me to have had to have swapped again. All right, here we go with another another thing to add. Our next number has to go right here for the maintain completeness. And that next number is a negative 7. Okay, negative 7. Oh, let me make that circle a little bit bigger. Negative 7. All right, so that's going to go right here. It has to go at index 5. Well, negative 7 needs to be swapped with 18 because this is smaller than its parent. Remember, in the code, we're going to take 5, subtract 1 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. That's where that 18 is coming from, okay? So we'll swap that. 18 will go here, and negative 7 will go there. Just a simple swap for what's at index 2 and what's at index 7. I could see making a little private method just to swap. That'll help you with the code, right? Okay, let's check. Now we, we, we're not done, right? We just swapped index 5 with index 2, but now we've got to check index 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is 0. So we're checking 0, the root. You can see that we have to swap again. So this needs to swap a second time. So this is a negative 4, and this is a, um, this is a negative 7. So this process, you can see, is that you know, we just added something to the very, very bottom, and then it rose up to the top. It's called bubbling up. And think about the runtime of it. Well, we have a complete tree. You don't get any more balance than a complete tree, right? So if we have, you know, 128 different things in our tree, well, 128 is is 2 to what power? Let's see, uh, 6, uh, 30, 30, 6, 64. So what is that, 7? So we're talking a max of, what, 7 swaps? That's nothing, right? I mean, that's that's seven steps of code. So this is still really fast being log in because we're only because we, we only have seven, you know, uh, layers if we have a, a, a tree that with that many items in it. All right. So uh, because that's log base, too, that's really fast. All right, let's go on to the next one. After the negative seven, we're going to add a nine. And I think we get to take this one off. I think that one's just a nine. OK. So there, there we have it. There's our, there's our tree. I'm just going to check my answer key to make sure that I've got <laughs> what I'm supposed to have, and that, that is it. So a common question on some multiple choice tests is to ask you to what would be printed if we called the two string method if we printed this heap, and just so you know, it prints in level order. So it just prints right down the array: negative seven, three, negative four, twenty-four, seven, eighteen, and nine. All right, let's take a look at a uh, max heap. Uh, I think we're just going to use the same data on this one, though. So let's make a max heap. All right, so we again start with here. 
we have a uh, 7. And then down here, the next thing we add is a negative 4. If you don't mind, I'm going to skip the array part because we've already discussed the n minus 1 over 2. Um, I just want to go through this process again. So negative 4 is less than 7. Remember, we're doing our max heap, so each child has to be less than its parent, not uh, not more than its parent. In other words, the parent can must be more than the child. All right, next we're going to add 18. That does not violate my max heap. Next, we'll add a 24. No violation there. Next, we'll add a 3. No violation there. Next, we'll add a negative 7. Oops. Uh, I, I totally messed up. I started doing a, a min heap, didn't I? All right, let me go back. Sorry about that. All right. Negative four. There was no violation there. Then we have to add an 18, and we're doing a max heap. So I need to swap 7 and 18. So this is the 18, and this is the 7. All right, next is a 24. Max heap. So I have to swap these two. So I swap the 24 and the negative 4. All right, then I have to swap the 18 and the 24 as well. Okay, next we're ready to add the 3. So that goes here. All right, 3 is less than 18, so we're good. All right, next I have to add the negative 7. Negative 7 is less than 7, we're good. Next I have to add the 9. But 9 is greater than its parent, so I have to swap 9 and 7. And that should be what we get when we're done. Again, let me double check my notes, make sure I got that just the way I want it, and that looks good. Okay, moving on. Okay, so at any stage of the heap's construction, the heap must be complete. Please keep that in mind. The process of switching the positions of a newly inserted node is called trickling down or bubbling down. The underlying data structure of the heap is usually supported with either an array or an expandable array. Um, so you could use just an array and have an expand method that expands as you need it, just like an array list. Uh, the array stores the positions of the nodes from top to bottom and left to right. This allows for constant O1 access to the furthest right node in the bottom row. So having direct access to the bottom right node allows a heap to maintain its completeness. All right, let's talk about removal from a min heap. We're going to remove from a min heap. The, uh, the process of removal is typically called pull, just like from a queue. And you'll see that this is part of something called the priority queue is usually what is used here. So we're going to remove from this min heap. The first thing I remove is, is always the thing on the top. So I remove the negative 7. That comes off. So that's gone. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll just put it over there. So I've removed from my min heap. Now at any stage of operation, I must have completeness. So what? So I remove from the top, but I have to fill it back in, and I fill it with the bottom right-hand corner, thereby maintaining completeness. So now what I need to do is I need to trickle down, or you know, it depends on what you call it. I, I kind of think of the other one as bubbling up, and I call this trickling down. Um, but, you know, you'll hear both words used. Okay. Um, so now that we've switched the 9 up here to fill in the tree, though, we need to check our min. This is a min heap. We need to check our min heap um, contract here. So we have, this has to be less than its two children, but you'll notice that it's not less than either one of them. So what we do is we switch it with the greater offender. So I'm going to switch it with the 9 and the negative 4. So we're going to switch with the right child. And remember, the right child is the index times 2 plus 2 in the array. So remember that, uh, let me make that note right here. The right child is uh, the right child of n 
is 2n plus 2. So why did I switch with the greater offender? Why did that matter? Well, if I had switched the 3 and the 9 and had the 9 here and the 3 here, then I'd have a 3 and a negative 4. So I want to pick the smaller of these two so that I, I when I swap it, I'm, I'm not in violation anymore. All right, now I need to check the 9 and the 18 because, remember, we're trickling down. This root's going to trickle down until we get to the right place. Well, 9 is less than 18, so we're good. All right, um, let's go on, and let's remove again. Okay, let's remove a negative 4. So what would happen if I remove a negative 4? Well, I need to replace it with the bottom right node, which is an 18. Okay, I need to check my condition. I need to swap with the bigger offender. So the bigger offender is the 3. And by bigger offender, in this case, I mean the one that is the most wrong in the wrong place. Um, and then I have 18 and 24 is fine, but 7 is not. So we're going to switch it. And you'll see that what happens, I ended up moving the 18 just, you know, all the way up and then all the way back down. All right, let's see what happens if you remove a 3. Move a 3 and the 18 is going to go right back where it was, right at the top. And we'll pick the bigger offender to swap with, which is the 7. And the 18 goes there. Okay, and then what are we going to do next? We're going to uh, pull off the 7. And, you know, let's pull, let's head out and pull the 7. Bottom right hand, the lowest child goes there. And then it's going to trickle down. So it's going to feel like there's a lot of trickling each time you do this. And that's just because you're pulling from the very bottom right. But remember, you know, you'd have to have millions of data points you know two to the you know just if you have just 32 uh levels to your tree you're already in the in the well you're in the billions right two to the 32 is like four billion something data items so and that's only 32 steps so it's totally not a problem still really fast log in time all right i think i have um let's see we could practice pulling from a max heap but i think you get the idea so what the important things to remember um, is that the root is always at index zero. The bottom right node is always your size of your heap. So keep a variable for size, okay? Uh, and then the size minus one is, is, is the bottom right node. Uh, if you have a node at index n, then its parent is at n minus one divided by two. If you have a node at index n, its left child is two n plus one, its right child is two n plus two. When you make your array, if you just want to have an, a, a heap of, you know, integers, then you don't need to make, like, a separate node class. Uh, but you might find it useful to make a node class, uh, especially if you're going to be dealing with, um, you know, something more complicated. We could also use generics, of course. We could make an array of type object and then um, store, you know, values E. But keep in mind that when you're using object types, like generics or strings or integer instead of int, that we can't just do less than or greater than we need to use the object's compare to method, dot compare to. And the compare to method, it, it means that the object implements comparable. So be on the lookout for that uh, when you're doing your assignments. And... Um, I think you're, that should pretty much cover everything you need to do to be able to do this. So um, good luck.